Let's just go over a topic that we've already covered in Unit 3, just to refresh, and that is the cost of a non-current asset. So we need this figure so we can calculate depreciation and we want the cost. And what we said in unit three was that's going to be the purchase price of the asset or if the owner is giving the asset to the business, it'll be the agreed value plus any cost required to get the asset in a capacity and location to earn revenue. But the cost has to provide an economic benefit for the life of the asset. So that included things like delivery fees, installation costs, and taxes. So just start reiterating that point. If we were to buy, say, a delivery van from another party, so they buy that, we buy that from them, and let's say we do it on credit, they give us an invoice, that's the purchase price. So that's an easy figure to calculate. Then we have the things that are required to get the car ready for uh, in a capacity and location to earn revenue but they have to last uh, or provide an economic benefit for the life of the asset. So for instance, something like getting it delivered to us for a one-off fee or having it installed, say maybe not a car, but if it was a computer or some taxes, some stamp duty, these are things that are one-off expenses. So therefore they'll last for the life of the car or the asset. Um, things that aren't going to last a lifetime, say insurance, registration, or a service agreement, uh, we're going to have to pay those every year. So we're going to have those in 2015, 2016, 2017, and so on. So they're not going to provide an economic benefit for the life of the asset. We're going to have to pay them each year. So therefore, they're not going to be a part of the asset's cost. So we don't include those. So just take an example, we purchased a new vehicle and we had a $20,000 purchase price plus GST. We've got some stamp duty, which is a government tax that uh, that's incurred in buying new cars. We've got a dealer fee and charges of $500. And then we've got some insurance and registration of $800 per year. So let's calculate the cost of the car. We've obviously got the purchase price, $20,000. Now, we'll have any other cost required to get the car in a condition and location to start earning revenue that will last a lifetime. So based on that, we've got the stamp duty, that's a one-off. The dealer's fees and charges, that's also a one-off. Then we've got the insurance and registration. So it's debatable whether that is actually required to get the car ready in a capacity to earn revenue. We could actually drive a car that's not insured, wouldn't be advisable. But we certainly can't say that that fee is going to last for an, uh, the asset's entire life. It actually says it's for one year per year. So therefore, it's not going to be part of the asset's cost. So we won't put that in. So the total cost of this car was $21,500. Just looking at what the differences were, why did we include the stamp duty and the dealer's fees as costs? Well, that's because they are required to get the car in a capacity and location to earn revenue and they provided an economic benefit for the life of the asset. These are only going to be paid once at the start of the asset's life. Whereas the insurance, is it required to get the vehicle in a capacity and location of earn revenue? Uh, it's debatable. And look, even if that is true, it's actually not going to last for the life of the asset. We're going to need to repay that every year. Let's take a second example. We bought a new computer with the following cost. So we've got a purchase price of 10,000, installation fee of 2,000, service contract of $200 per year. So the cost will be the purchase price. We know that one. Plus any cost required to get it in a condition or location to earn revenue that will last a lifetime. So based on that, we've got the installation fee and we're gonna leave out the service contract. So the total cost here would be $12,000. Uh, looking at that again, what was the difference? The installation fee was required to get the computer ready to earn revenue. We couldn't start using it until it was installed. And it is only paid once, so it'll last a lifetime for the asset. But the service contract, not required to get it ready to use. We can use it without it being serviced. This is only uh, something we need if it ever breaks down. And secondly, it's not going to last for the life of the asset. We're going to need to repay it every year. So based on that rationale, we left it out.